This is the heart of New Zealand's North Island, a vast lake whose waters feed the country's largest river and is part of a huge volcanic and geothermal area, described as nature's ultimate playground for tourists. Every March, this small lakeside town transforms itself and hosts an event that is one of the ultimate tests of human endurance. If this will be the only Ironman I ever win, it's okay. I think I have, have a race win in me here in Topol. No one's unbeatable. No one is unbeatable. Only the strongest guy wins at the end of the day. I love a race. I love to race. So if I get the opportunity to be competitive with, then that'll be pretty exciting. I've been chasing for 17 years, and I just love hunting. And I don't want to be the hunted one, definitely not. Iron Man's hard as it is, so when you're in pain every step, it, makes it, it takes it to the next level of pain. I think some people might come here thinking that they're going to be in for an easy day, but it's certainly, it's not an easy course by any means. I couldn't imagine not, you know, doing the sport through a Kiwi summer and, and training for New Zealand Ironman. For all the competitors on this day, the biggest battle will come from within. They'll swim 3.8 kilometres, bike 180 kilometres, and run 42.2 kilometres. This is the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand. Estonia's Marco Elbert returns after his 2014 victory here. It's good to see uh, Marino here. He never races unprepared. He's always ready to go and, and race really, really hard. And between Cameron and him there, I have almost 30 Ironman victories. Marino van Honecker won the weather shortened event in 2012. The first five numbers on the start list are, are the guys on paper, if everything uh, goes right, should be the top five at the, at the finish. Cameron Brown set a new course record in 2016. Is there another win in him at 44 years old? Last year was, was pretty tough, yeah. Mentally, yeah, pretty far, fried and, and um, physically, you know, I, I was in a bad state after that. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to win that when, you, when you're 43, that's for sure. A breakthrough victory for Terenzo Bazzoni in Western Australia could be the turning point for the Kiwi. I really think I, I've developed a lot as an Ironman athlete and as an athlete over, over the years. I'm 32 years old now, and I, I think I have, have a race win in me here in Topol. And 70.3 Topo champion Braden Curry needs to prove that he can turn his adventure race experience into Ironman distance success. So for me, this is probably the second long course race I'll be ever done um, in road distance, road wise. So. Uh, you know, I'm definitely taking it as a bit more of a learning curve, um, just trying to figure out the pacing, figuring out, you know, where, where it's going to hurt me and what I need to do. Ten times 70.3 winner Annabelle Luxford will be looking to champion Meredith Kessler for some on-course inspiration. I guess I'm the biggest challenge that I'll face. It will be nice to have um, Meredith on course. She's so well credentialed. I mean, I think this is her, she'll be going for a sixth title here. And Kessler is in no doubt that this year will be a tough race. Oh my goodness, there's, there's so many girls on the line that are a threat to everyone. Uh, Yvonne and Bella and Laura and Carrie, and I could name several other more. Fourth here in 2016, Laura Siddle is certainly in contention. The lineup we have this year for the women's race is really exciting. Um, how will it affect my race? I have no idea. I still cannot believe they did that fast time last year. He's definitely the king of Topol. He's a competitive athlete. I wasn't surprised he won it again. Mentally, he's just so strong. Getting older and defying things that take down normal athletes. He's, he's done amazing things for the sport here in New Zealand. He's just so solid. To beat him mentally, he would have to be one of the hardest people out there on, on the course. He is, of course, Cameron Brown. 44 years old, defending champion and record holder at Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand. I think my mum and dad said to me a few times, you know, you might have to get a real job, you know, because you know, I lived at home until I was 27 years of age, so uh, it was very tough, you know, and lucky I had um, you know, some great Kiwi sponsors and 
you know, I'd go to Japan every year for sort of six or seven years and race up there and um, you know, that, that was the, the great thing about the, the sport, you know, you'd do our summer season and then you'd go and do the Northern Hemisphere season so you just did back-to-back -back racing and uh, followed the sun every year. And, uh, a typical triathlete when I first started when I was a teenager was probably over the hill at um, you know 30, early 30s, mid 30s. So you know a lot of guys are pushing the boundaries now. We're in our 40s, and um, but I think if you have that passion for it and have a love for the sport, then you continue. And you know, there's goals that um, probably I haven't achieved in, in my lifetime. You know, it's two seconds and two thirds at the world champs, and never quite got to that number one podium spot so that I think probably if I, if I had have got there then uh, you, I, I could have been retired by now but um, I think yeah just uh, continually enjoying the sport and, and um, yeah I just love swimming, biking and running. 6.30 on the beach at Lake Taupo and the competitors face a fierce challenge from the warriors of the Ngati Tuwharitoa Iwi, the Māori tribe who have guardianship of Lake Taupo. It's a time of reflection for the pros as they head into the water with a 3.8 kilometre swim ahead. The wind has built up overnight and conditions are far from ideal. Uh, I thought that it would be difficult to swim because uh, it's uh, really the worst conditions I could expect. Uh, I know I'm very bad uh, when uh, there are waves like that, uh, short waves in a lake. The wind was howling and howling and howling outside and I was like, well, it's going to be opposite of what it was last year for sure. It's going to be nice and, nice and windy and I was, you know, prepared for it, I was ready for it. Everyone has to face the same stuff. The pro men start their race at 6.45, just as the sun is filtering through the cloud. Fire! Over 20 pro men swimming this exterior wetsuits 3.8 kilometre course. Among them, 2014 winner Marco Albert, who is quick to lead out in the early stage of the swim. It's a minute later when the pro women get their start signal. Defending champion Meredith Kessler is always a strong swimmer and will catch the slower men. This year, she's competition in the water from Australian Annabelle Luxford. Bella and I typically swim together. In the past, in Kona, we swam together the entire way. We biked together the entire way. Uh, so, and we have really good camaraderie out there and I really enjoy racing with Annabelle. Uh, but it's, it's honestly gonna be keeping up with Bella. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Kessler and Luxford out front but the sharp chop created by the wind will slow their progress today. The men have established their order, with Marco Elbert and Terenzo Bazzoni leading. In these conditions, the swimmers can gain an advantage by slipstreaming the competitor in front. Back on the beach, the age group athletes are making their way into the water. Over 1,200 have come from 49 different countries. While many events now stagger the start for the age group athletes, Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand still starts them en masse. It's another challenge in what will be for many their biggest physical challenge in life. Michelle Gunn is the 2017 Tony Jackson Scholarship recipient. The scholarship is set up to support athletes that without this assistance may not be able to participate in the Ironman New Zealand event. Ten years ago I was in a um, car accident with my mum so we were driving up to see my granddad who was unwell and um, yeah just speared off the side of the road and the car flipped and obviously I was seriously injured so I was in ICU for about five days I think and had um, an 18 hour operation where the amazing surgeons like stitched my face back together and since then I've had probably about 20 operations and the last one being I had my eye removed and an artificial eye put in so that was in May this year which was pretty exciting I was scared at the start but um, now I'm happy and relieved that it's all sorted. <laughs> Michelle was introduced to Ironman through her sister and has already completed a 70.3 event, but the commitment to a full training program has been a significant step up. She's driven in what she's 
you know she wants to do. Um, she's probably got the motivation of trying to beat her sister's time at Ironman, um, but uh, yeah, she's she's definitely a positive and motivated person. And Michelle's strength is her, you know, is her swimming and her running. And so as long as we can set her up for a good run, then um, you know I think she'll she'll probably achieve a, a fantastic result. Obviously, training for an Ironman is physically demanding, but it's also just as equally mentally demanding. And I feel like sometimes getting through like these six hour training sessions that I can do almost anything after doing that. The pros are already halfway down the exterior wetsuit swim course when the gun goes off at seven. The biggest challenge for these swimmers is to find a clear space, avoid being kicked and just cope with the rough conditions. At the front of the race, five swimmers have broken free in the pro men as they turn and head back down the lake. It's Marco Elbert, Clayton Fattel, Graham O'Grady, Terenzo Bazzoni and Braden Curry. As expected, Meredith Kessler and Annabelle Luxford have broken free of the female group and are on the tail of the second group of men as they make the first turn. The strong wind has spread the age group athletes wide over the course. For some, this will be a longer swim than the measured 3.8 kilometres. It's still the lead five as they turn for the finish line on the beach. Brian Rhodes and Todd Skipworth another 30 back, but no sign of Cameron Brown or Marino Van Honecker. The conditions have taken a toll on the swimmers. This year's time of 48.01 for Marco Elbert is three minutes 36 slower than the swim record. It'll take another two minutes to run the short distance along the road before they climb the stairs to the first transition. Fortunately for, for me, I'm kind of usually in, in a small enough group out of the water. There's maybe four or five of us. Uh, the run, run along the, the road here out of the swim up to transition is pretty cool. You're just lined with four spectators deep on each side and uh, you're just trying not to get carried away. You, with, with, all that, with all that good energy, you just want to sprint, but you have to bring your heart rate down after, after being, yeah, being on your face for 45 minutes. You just, uh, yeah, your body just needs to get used to pumping the blood the whole way up and down. Um, you want to start settling into a bit of rhythm in your legs uh, so you're ready for the 180 kilometer bike. Mark Bowstead is eighth out of the water, three minutes behind, but still ahead of the lead females. Transition is well rehearsed for the pros, and it's Kiwi Terenzo Bazzoni who leads them out at the start of the 180 kilometre cycle. Back at the beach, Simon Cochran leads the next group out after 53 minutes, including Cyril Viano, Marino Van Honecker, and defending champ Cameron Brown. And just a minute back, Meredith Kessler leads Annabelle Luxford out of the water. But her time is 6 minutes 37 down on her 2016 time. What toll will this extra time in the water take out of all the athletes as they face the 180 kilometre bike and 42.2 kilometre run today? Kerry Lester exits the water five and a half minutes down on Kessler and just behind her the main female bunch including Laura Siddle, Jocelyn McCauley and Dutchwoman Yvonne Van Vlerken, who'd finished second to Meredith Kessler at Ironman Arizona in November. So at the end of the swim leg, it's Marco Albert with a very narrow lead over Clayton Fattel, followed by Graham O'Grady, then Terenzo Bazzoni and Braden Curry making up the top five. But no sign of Cameron Brown in the top ten. And in the pro women, it's defending champion Meredith Kessler just ahead of Annabelle Luxford. It's five minutes back to Kerry Lester, followed by Jocelyn McCauley, rounding out the top five, Emma Bilham. Still to come, the wind that battered the swimmers pushes the leaders out to Reparo on leg one. And an all-black legend takes to the roads in pursuit of Iron Man. This is Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Ironman New Zealand. The bike route will take the riders 48 kilometres out of Topo to the town of Reparov, 
returning to Topo before repeating the lap and finishing back at Topo transition. Braden Curry's the early leader as they head out of town, but Terenzo Bazzoni is quick to take control. It was funny at the top of uh, top of the hill climb here on lap one, um, Terenzo pulled up beside me and he goes, you think this is just one lap race, mate? And uh, I looked at him and I was like, oh, I wish. And uh, we took off and uh, he, he flew, you know, he had an amazing first part of that ride. It's pretty unreal down here in Topo when when everything goes goes well, when, when you race well, when the weather goes well. But again, it doesn't, for, for the guys, for the professional, a lot of the professionals, the wind conditions don't really matter too much. It, it slows down the end time, but, but all of us are racing, like looking at our heart rates, looking at our power meters, and, and judging our pacing by, by those numbers. I've got a really aer aerodynamic position, and I can cut through that wind pretty quick. So. With a strong tailwind, Bazzoni reaches the turnaround in under one hour. There's a small crowd there to cheer him on. He's pulled away from Curry to lead here by one and a half minutes, but there's still 134 kilometers left to ride. Curry turns at Reparoa, but Marco Elbert is close behind. The 2014 winner, well positioned. Mark Bowstead has pulled back three minutes on this lap to climb from sixth to fourth, taking time out of Bazzoni, and Clayton Fattel, who turns fourth. It's another five minutes before the next group arrive at Reparoa. Frenchman Cyril Viano leading Cameron Brown as they turn to face the headwind for the first time. As expected, Meredith Kessler is leading the women's field. Her carbon fibre bike frame carries the initials of her supporters and those close to her. And on the front forks, her favourite word, gumption. Annabelle Luxford is in close company. This is the Australian's third Ironman start after a career racing ITU. I'd sort of been consistently in the top 10 in the world in ITU for a number of years and I couldn't do that anymore. I just couldn't do the, the run or the speed work to um, be as competitive as I'd like. So I knew I had a strong swim and bike and I knew that, um, yeah, long course racing, I guess probably suited that a little bit more and that's why I originally made the move across and then really enjoyed it. And then uh, I guess, you know, you grow up and you hear of Kona and, once you're sort of doing half Ironman and seeing all the other athletes that are doing Ironman too, I guess it is like a little bit of a bug, so here I am. Yvonne van Vlerken is still trailing Kessler by six minutes, but she's moved into third place. I've been chasing for 17 years and I just love hunting and I don't want to be the hunted one, definitely not. I think it's way easier to, to hunt because mentally it's easier because you're gaining on people and you're catching people and you're counting down. Laura Siddle finished second to Kessler in the 2016 70.3 at Taupo and she finished fourth year last year in Ironman. Jocelyn McCauley scored her first Ironman win last year at Mallorca, although she was a non-finisher at Topo in 2016. I think last year it was like eight minutes down, seven or eight minutes down, and so I was excited that six minutes, I was, I was really excited for that because I figured I could hold it pretty steady for the bike with that six minutes and, and uh, that would be good. Kessler and Luxford have traded places at the Ripper turnaround, but they still hold a strong six minute lead to the chasers. Van Vlerken leads the next group. Their pace is matching Kessler and Luxford, but they just can't make up the six minutes they lost in the swim. But there's still 132 kilometres to ride as they head back to town. Ironman has strict anti-drafting rules on the bike, so all three are keeping their regulation distance as they ride out together. 
Bazzoni's now climbing the final hill before passing the motor race circuit and turning to the streets of Taupo Township. It's a long climb up from the valley, and not surprisingly, the riders have nicknamed it Heartbreak Hill. People come from all over the world to compete in Kellogg's Nutri-Grain Ironman New Zealand, but it's the Kiwis who make up the biggest contingent. Former All Black Ian Jones is taking up the Ironman challenge after a stellar career on the field. Wilson through one. Ian Jones reaches out, and that's a super try for Ian Jones. Before I become a rugby player, I was a swimmer as well. So swimmers are, are you know, it's a tough sport. You've got to be goal orientated. You've got to be self motivated. You've got to be self driven. All the rest of it. And I know my swimming background when I was a kid helped me immensely when I became a rugby player. A little bit on the, the field, but a lot off the field in terms of uh, work ethic and training. Jones's career as Locke included 105 All Black games, of which 79 were tests. He retired from rugby in 2004. And there was a six month period when I came back from England, arrived here in New Zealand and didn't train. Didn't go to the gym, didn't have to go for a run, wasn't sort of motivated to do any of that. You know, it was probably the worst six months of my life, you know, mentally I was terrible, you know, physically all these aches and pains came back and looked at my wife one day and thought, well, I just can't live like this, this is not who we are, who I am, and, and I need to get back out there, so got back into a bike actually and did a lot of adventure racing and triathlons, ocean swimming, which I love with a swimming background and just got back into the cycle of, of fitness and health and well-being and I felt great ever since and, and I haven't stopped to be honest. Yeah, I enjoy the swimming. Unfortunately, the swimming by all accounts is the shortest part of it, right? But you get that out of the way first. I've learned to love the bike. I think uh, during the course of my training, I've spent a lot more time on my bike than any other sort of discipline we've done. And you know, the, the run's a run. I've never run a marathon in my life. In fact, I've never biked 180k in my life either. Also on 3.8k, but I'm doing that all on the one day. It's a heck of a milestone event, it's a hell of a challenge, it is achievable and you know you can only put in what hours you've got to put into it and you can't be worried about that and actually you've got to be pretty excited by the challenge and that's really what's driven me. Tony Jackson scholarship winner Michelle Guns had a good swim and now heads for a bike in what will be the most challenging discipline for her. Glad it's over. Yeah. Happy with your time considering the conditions? Yeah, happy with that. It's pretty tough. Still a good tailwind out the left Hopefully. <laughs> Having only sight in her left eye, she'll need to take extra care when cycling in traffic. Terenzo Bazzoni has held his lead and arrives first into the township. He's looking strong as he powers down the main street, taking in the cheers of the local supporters who are happy to see a Kiwi in the lead. His time from Reparo to Topo is two and a half minutes faster than second placed Braden Curry. Curry was victorious at the 70.3 event here in November, but as he heads out for his second lap, questions remain whether one of New Zealand's top adventure and multi sport races can convert that experience into victory over the full Ironman distance. Estonia's Marco Elbert is less than a minute back but he looks uncomfortable as he arrives in town. Pazzoni's lead is three minutes 57, with Albert third, Mark Baustead on his own in fourth, having broken free from Fatel. Van Hornecker and Brown, both with a huge job ahead if they're to close on the leader. It takes over 2,000 volunteers to run this event in Tobu. Many return year after year, but sometimes there's the desire to step into the competitor's shoes. Harriet Filer was a bike race director after 14 years of volunteering. After doing being a director for five years, I thought I might as well bite the bullet and give myself a new challenge. I had said I was going to resign from being director and Wayne read and said, oh, so does that mean you're doing Iron Man? And he said it in front of everybody, and I kind of was like, yep, I'll do it. 
I was kind of put on the spot a little bit, but it was good because I needed that push. I've been really lucky because I've got a good friend, Tracy, who's organised a support team for me. So I've got over 30 supporters wearing T-shirts and having banners and, yeah, so that's going to be very cool. It's going to be a long day, but I've just got to be patient. And I've done it all in training, and this is like the finale. Marino van Honecker has returned to Topo after winning the race in 2012, which was shortened after a severe storm. But this would not be his year, as he withdrew after becoming unwell on the second lap of the bike. Out front, Terenzo Bazzoni is flying with a strong tailwind. He's in record-breaking pace as he heads to Reparar. Braden Curry is still second, but the gap is growing to over five minutes. And he hasn't shaken off Marco Albert, who's two minutes back. 2014 winner Albert looks comfortable at this pace. In the women's race, Luxford and Kessler are still trading places at the front. Both riders looking relaxed, but behind them, Laura Siddle and Yvonne van Vlecken have picked up the pace and closed that six minute gap to four minutes. It's all about patience, to be honest, and normally nine out of 10 times, patience will pay off in the end. So it's such a long day and a lot of people, always happens that people blow up. I do think that girls are way better in doing this than guys. Um, it happens more often that, often that guys blow up than girls do. <laughs> <laughs> to be very honest. So I think um, women are very good in handling, or maybe we're better in listening to our body. American Jocelyn McCauley is hanging on with Siddle and Van Vlerken. At the turn for home, Bazzoni collects his lap to armband. It's a simple system to help the marshals identify the riders on their home lap. Braden Curry is nearly six minutes behind, but a lot of success in Ironman comes down to patience, riding your own race. There's still 42 kilometers of bike and 42 kilometers of run left in this race. Mark Bausted has overtaken Marco Elbert for third, but there's less than 20 seconds between them. And finally, 15 minutes behind the leader and in sixth place, Cameron Brown, Cyril Viano and Per Bittner. The gap seems insurmountable, but this is Cameron Brown, 12 times champion of this race. And sometimes riding with a legend can be all the difference between failure and success. Uh, I was very tired. Uh, I saw my wife uh, and I thought uh, I will give up. Uh, it's too hard. Uh, I feel too bad. Finally, uh, a guy uh, who was behind me passed me. Uh, we catched uh, Cameron uh, when we do the lap of Taupo. And uh, I thought, OK, uh, it's backwind now. So I tried to, to do it and uh, I continued, I continued. And, uh, yeah, it was very difficult because uh, usually on an Ironman you have uh, some moments when you feel good, you can push on the pedals and uh, be okay with it, uh, what you do. And me, I was suffering every time on the bike. It's not so usual for me. So it was very complicated. Per Bittner is Yvonne Van Vlerken's partner. He was showing no sign of blowing up. Maybe this Ironman couple could celebrate a double podium at Topo. It's the final climb of Heartbreak Hill for Bazzoni, but the strain is showing on the leader's face. His speed so far could see him 10 minutes under the cycle record, but what price is there to pay for that pace? Curry is starting to pour on the pace, maybe sensing a chance to close the gap. Michelle Gunn is taking a positive attitude on the bike. I think the main physical challenge would definitely be cycling on the roads and just 
my visibility, being able to see, um, it's super helpful cycling with other people. I can just trust them to look. Uh, as soon as I kind of have to turn all the way back around like that, I veer off a little bit. So yeah, I think um, that would definitely be the most challenging point. Terenzo Bazzoni is first to the transition, but his pace has slowed considerably over the final 10 kilometres. But the lead is still large enough for him to be out on the run course before Curry arrives. Bazzoni won Ironman Western Australia in under eight hours in December 2016. That's the fastest Ironman time recorded by a New Zealander. Could it be that this year is Bazzoni's at Taupo? Braden Curry is two minutes 12 behind as he heads out on the street. He's taken over four minutes out of Bazzoni on the ride back to Taupo. But what has that taken out of him? There's plenty of support for Bazzoni at the 400 metre marker on Taupo's main street. In transition, Marco Elbert has claimed back third place now, one minute 54 behind Curry. But Curry is the unknown here, as none of these men have raced him over this distance. Bowsted is another one minute 50 back in fourth. On the waterfront, Bazzoni's looking good. This is the time when discipline comes to the fore. He'll have a race pace worked out and needs to keep to it. Curry runs through the crowded waterfront. He's been given split times and it's now 1 minute 30. Skipworth and Fatel are still together as they come in 9 minutes behind the leader. And finally, out on the street, Verno, Cameron Brown and Bittner make it back from Repara. It's been a tough day for the 12-time top ball champion. You, you knew it was going to be tough coming home. That headwind just got stronger and stronger. So I think everyone you know, really died on that last you know, 45 k's from Repara. It was um, yeah, probably, probably some of the toughest conditions we've seen in the 19 years. Um, it's hard to remember back to some of them, but uh, yeah, there was pretty strong winds and uh, when you know you've got a 42k run to follow, it uh, makes, makes things harder. So Bazzoni's lead cut back to 2 minutes 12 by the end of the cycle. Curry, Albert and Bowsted well within striking distance with a marathon left to run. But is it too much for Cameron Brown, 11 minutes 31 behind? This is Ironman, anything can happen hands together, let off the bike, Terenzo Bazzoni, it's not over yet. Here down in Taupo, uh, the crowds are amazing, it's, it's, a, it's a compact course and, and the town's really compact, so, so there's so many spectators around, around this, this region. And the crowds, especially when it's a home crowd, have a way of, of carrying your spirits, uh, keeping, keeping you on a high, and uh, that's, that's, what help, that's what's helped me get to the finish line a couple times. They come out in support, and, and the, the three laps feels like the Boston Marathon. I mean, there are people all over, so that's pretty. That's a pretty neat thing. I don't think there's any part of that run course that isn't lined with support and with people cheering and, and calling your names and that sort of thing. And it just, yeah, it does give you, you know, that goosebumps and that special magic feeling. Oh, I think just the atmosphere, the, the way the, the crowd and, and the locals get behind the event, you know, and get, you get Taupo on that on, on a great day. But yeah, when, when the weather's perfect, it's just an incredible place to, to race. There's a dramatic shift in the women's race as the leaders head through to transition. Uh, I genuinely care about um, Annabelle and her success, and and it was great to have that camaraderie. And, we'll, and we did it both laps. I think we were like picking flowers on the on the way back into town because the chase pack caught us. <laughs> we just were like enjoying our like smooth ride, and then uh, and then it was like, oh, they are here. Uh, initially, I thought you know if we can make another minute up on them coming back in on the last lap, it would be great. 
but the way I always felt when I was riding, I was like, oh, I think they're probably going to put time back into us because I just didn't seem to be going anywhere. And then I looked up and I could see both Meredith and Annabelle and I was like, okay, this is on and I'm going to chase them down and make sure I get in, get in off the bike first. So it's Siddle, Kessler, Luxford, Macaulay and Van Vlerken, a five rider group that finishes the women's bike within 30 seconds of each other. But this year's bike time is 13 minutes 20 slower than the 2016 record set by Lucy Gossage. With the Hoka Oni Oni marathon left to run, the question remains, who has enough in reserve to outrun the competition? Uh, so the, the bike was tough. I thought that was one, of, especially the first loop with that side. It was almost like coming back from Javi with the side wind. It was intense out there, so. Yep, I've never been in Ironman New Zealand when we've come off with five girls in T2, so that was a race. Looking at the positions for the women after the bike, nothing between Siddle in first and Van Vlerken in fifth. Wendy McAlpine 28 minutes behind this group and missing from the results, Kerry Lester, who withdrew on lap one. As the women head out on the run, Meredith Kessler taking the lead, looking to show early dominance over the competition. Siddle is close to her in second, but with Kessler capable of running a sub three hour marathon, the question remains who can stay with her? The strain of leading the bike is showing on Annabelle Luxford as she heads off in the run. Van Vlerken is a capable runner, having finished second to Kessler at Arizona last year. Kessler certainly has the support of the crowd as she joins the runners in the 70.3 race, which is being held alongside the Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand. And Jocelyn McCauley, the dark horse of this group, after scoring her first Ironman win in 2016. You know, I knew in a way I had in the back of my mind, I have this in the bag. I knew that out of all of us, I was going to have the best run split and that I, I could put in a minute on those, on those other women. But I knew still, like, patience, 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 like, you know, don't, don't try to run them down in the first two miles, like, just patience. Out on the roads, Bazzoni is starting to show fatigue. It's not long before Braden Curry has him in his sights. It was um, that, that moment uh, chasing Terenzo down when I was probably 30, 40 seconds off. Uh, it's a little bit different in Ironman for me and uh, I did have to stay quite disciplined there because in 70.3 at that point in time I would have just gone for it, you know, I would have just chased him down and, and really gone for it. But um, I knew that, yeah, I just had to take a little bit more time in doing that and I knew that I was still, still gaining, still getting good splits and, um, you know, time would come. Curry's pace has been faster from the start of the Hoka Onioni Marathon. He takes the lead on the way back to the town centre. Laura Settle has dropped back to third and Macaulay is making good progress now, taking the place at the 5K mark. Eight Ks, she's caught Luxford. Meanwhile, Yvonne Van Vlerken has caught Siddle and will move into fourth position. Macaulay has looked the strongest so far on the Hoka Onioni Marathon as they head along the promenade at the 11 K mark. She finds herself sharing the lead with Kessler. I uh, came alongside Meredith and uh, that was just, that was an unbelievable experience. To be able to run with such a legend, like we were shoulder to shoulder, like running down the, uh, the, the lake and it was just, I, it was unbelievable, you know, it's just dreams come true in so many ways. So to be able to run with her and to be able to, to lead, like lead the race, at that point, you know, I was just like, I at least I'm going to lead this race. I'm going to lead Ironman New Zealand. Out front in the men's race, Curry is on his second lap. But in the distance, Bazzoni is hanging on. This race far from over. Mark 
Jacko Albert is looking strong in third and may still be a threat as he starts lap two. Brown and Viano are still running together, but as they head to the turn, the gap to Curry is nine minutes. Curry is showing no sign of easing up, his pace up over the last split. But Bazzoni is in trouble and has been overtaken by Albert. The tactics of going hard at the front, which worked so well for Terenzo at Western Australia, have failed him here and the Kiwi is fading. Jocelyn McCauley could be forgiven for thinking she was invisible to the crowd, but she leads Kessler at the turn. In third, Luxford is less than a minute behind. McCauley makes her break on the lakefront and takes a small lead over Kessler. I always blow kisses to the camera then um, because I, I think about that going to my daughter back at home and uh, we always we blow kisses uh, all the time like on the phone and stuff like that so it just helps me stay present in the moment and really really enjoy the moment and really enjoy the race. Brayden Curry is on his final lap. This is a very different experience for the multi-sport athlete who often runs alone in the mountains. Marco Elbert is starting to close the gap in second. Cameron Brown, meantime, closing on Terenzo Bazzoni for third place. It's an astonishing run by Brown, who's the fastest on the course at this time, and Bazzoni shows his frustration. McCauley has extended her lead as she heads back to Topo. Annabelle Luxford has caught Meredith Kessler and is challenging for that second position. And in the men's second place battle, Albert has faded badly and Cameron Brown is relentlessly hunting him down. Brown sets off in pursuit of Curry. But Curry is already on the waterfront. With five kilometres left in his race, only a disaster stands between him and the finish tape. McCauley is in control now at the front of the women's race. But drama behind as Kessler moves back into second and Annabelle Luxford is walking on the waterfront. Meredith was in second and Annabelle was in third at that time. And then one of the spectators cried out, you know, Annabelle's walking and that sort of thing. So managed to pass her suddenly pretty quickly and then just had locked on to Meredith and the biker that was with her. It was a little bit odd and a little bit strange sort of closing in on her and passing her and you know as we went past I said you know come with me and don't tell my coach that he'll probably <laughs> he'll probably tell me off for saying that but you know I wanted to give her you know she's got such a history here and I could see that she wasn't she was struggling and I wanted to give her a, give her a hand and get her to the finish line as well. He's won the 70.3 here. Now Braden Curry is heading for victory in the Ironman. That last last section of that run is, you know, Taupo really put it on. It's probably the last 2K that you've got, you know, up to thousands of people uh, lining the streets and all cheering you on. And being a, you know, being a Kiwi, I think it always uh, means a little bit more to the locals here as well. So. There's time for a quick glance back as Curry enters the final stretch. 
but Cam Brown is still on the waterfront. Victory is out of his grasp. Year 2017, Ironman in New Zealand, Kellogg's Nutrigrain, Brandon Kieran! together for us when you got out on that run you chased everybody else down and you knew you were not going to be caught it's amazing uh, I didn't know I wasn't going to be caught but um, I know Terenzo is an incredible athlete and I, I, I regard him so high in this sport and he's done so much and uh, I just knew I just knew I had to hurt him early on I knew I had to blow his confidence early on and uh, that was just my goal. I wasn't going to let him hold that lead for too long for me to get tired. So I just went out strong. I caught him and uh, obviously put him off his game. Cameron Brown heading through the crowd to take second. And at 44 years old, runs his fastest ever marathon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's my yeah, quickest ever. And yeah, the conditions were not, not fast running conditions. So uh, yeah, just dug deep and uh, gave him my utmost. But, um, you know, just a little bit short, so yeah, you, you're disappointed in some ways. You'd love to win a 13th title, but uh, you know, you can't control what other people were uh, capable of, and, and uh, you know, the best man won on the day. Running in the second place! Cyril Viano making up for his 2016 disappointment, overcoming doubt and finishing third. So Braden Curry is champion. Another podium for Brown. Bowstead takes fifth in front of Bazzoni and Bittner. On her, she was the fastest amateur in Kona in 2014. She comes here in 2015, finishes fifth place overall. Last year, she won Ironman Mallorca in Spain. This and is this Jocelyn McCauley's second goal. Ironman win. And she looks like she could just keep going. Your women's winner, Nutrigrain, Ironman New Zealand, from the USA, Jocelyn McCauley! Wow! The guards changed here. You know you were chasing, and you know you had Meredith Kessler here. You, you, you ran against her a couple years ago when you took fifth, uh, but it was all about the run for you today. And that plan, which I gotta believe might have been your plan, worked out. Yes, it was definitely my plan. I mean, just to hold steady. I knew that if I had her within five minutes um, coming off of the bike, that I had it. And when I heard that it was one minute, I just, I was so happy. <laughs> so <laughs> it was unbelievable. I mean, nothing is ever certain um, in an Ironman, but uh, I knew that I at least could have it in the bag. <laughs> so. She's 36 years old from the United Kingdom, born in Yorkshire. Let's welcome Laura Siddle. Fourth in Topo last year, Laurel Siddle comes home in second place after a strong marathon finish. But it's a disappointed Meredith Kessler in third. We were, and I say we, my team, we were so prepared in the run. I was most looking forward to getting my feet on the ground and running a 259 marathon, which we were prepared to do. But me, Meredith, the technician, did not deliver. Um, I failed out there mechanically, nutritionally. I just didn't deliver for this town that's been so good to us. And uh, that will forever sort of sting a little bit. A sub three hour marathon taking McCauley to her second Ironman win. Commanding lead over Siddell and Kessler. Luxford overcoming her fatigue to finish fourth, but Yvonne Van Verken blowing out of the race with 10 Ks left to run. So we celebrate Kellogg's Nutrigrain Ironman New Zealand with two new winners, Braden Curry and Jocelyn McCauley. Daniel Plews was the first age group athlete over the line in 10th overall. And for the rest of the afternoon and into the evening, 
they ran across the line to be called Iron Man. And among the finishers, Michelle Gunn. It's a long journey if you go right back to the accident to come to this point here. Does it feel like this is the start of something? Yeah, definitely. I want to come back next year. That was so, so amazing and just, yeah, like impossible to put into words the feeling of crossing like the finish line and hearing everyone and just knowing you've achieved something so amazing. I feel like I can do anything now. <laughs> Ian Jones finished in 11 hours, 55 minutes. I, I believe if you set your mind to whatever task that you set your mind to, yeah, everything is achievable. So yeah, there'll be other challenges, but this is one at the moment I'm just going to say, because it was tough. Um, but I've never been called an Iron Man ever in my life before, uh, until yesterday. And so the finishers kept coming, into the night, cheered on by the volunteers, the supporters, the winners, and the endless energy of Mike Riley on the microphone. For some, it was their first, for others, their last. But they'll all take with them the title Iron Man. <laughs>